welcome back to your irregular Latvian lesson. There's this really nice activity slash tradition that exists in Latvia for a couple of years now, where every year the Riga Latvian Association, Rigas Latvijas Biedriba, together with the Latvian Writers Association and some others, conduct a survey to find out the word of the year, the unword of the year, the best phrase of the year, and the worst. Their picks are not always amazing, but most of the time they're funny or cringy and have contributed to creating cultural moments in Latvia, things that we can refer to. And I thought that for somebody who is still learning Latvian or has just arrived to Latvia, it would be interesting to have a look at the picks for the year 2022 and see what they were all about. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's go! start with the Gada Vart, the word of the year. And for 2022, the word that was chosen is... Drumroll, please! Okupeklis. Okupeklis. If you were in Latvia in 2022, you might have seen this word used a lot in the media, because it was a whole big thing. It is a new word that is made from two words that exist, occupatia, occupation, and piaminaklis, a monument or a memorial, which itself derives from the word piaminia, piaminia, remembrance. For monument and occupation, we get okupeklis, which refers to a monument that was created during a time of occupation and therefore is a symbol of the occupying power. This word gained momentum mostly in reference to the infamous Uzvaras Pieminiklis, the victory monument that was torn down in the summer of 2022. It used to stand just in the beginning of Par Daugava, the other side of uh, Daugava, not the center, but where the National Library is, in Uzvaras Parks, the victory park. The debate leading up to this demolition was very, very tense, as there were people who were defending the monument and what it stands for, and also people who were defending it as part of history. And it's easy to forget that it actually had not been standing there for that long. Many people, including me, thought that it had been there since like 1945, since the end of World War II. But actually, it's only been there since 1985, so there's that. But mostly, of course, this monument was a place of gathering for the Russian-speaking population to celebrate Victory Day, notably, the 9th of May, while the rest of the world remembers Second World War on the 8th of May, the day that it ended. And at the same time, for many Latvians, this monument has always been a painful reminder of, you know, what happened after World War II, and that was the forceful incorporation of Latvia in the Soviet Union. But now it's gone. So this year was not the first that this debate had been brought up, but in context with Russia's war in Ukraine, I guess you could say that the debate had reached a boiling point. I agree with the pick for word of the year for Okupeklis because I think it is a very nice way for Latvia to show our stance clearly on both Russia's invasion of Ukraine and also in us coming to terms with our own history and choosing what we believe in and that we do not tolerate aggressors in our country. So, now you know what Okupeklis means. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more in depth about the Victory Monument and why it was problematic, head over to Patreon for a longer story. But we are moving on to the Gada Nevarts, the on word of the year. And this year it's a little bit less exciting because the on word of the year has to do with an incorrectly used word, but it's still good to know, especially if you are studying or working in Latvia. The word, a verb, is sanctioned. Sanctioned and its adjective sanctionats for men and sanctionata for women. Whenever we hear that, the first thing we think is sanctions, and that is exactly how it was used incorrectly. By wanting to say like this oligarch is sanctioned, Latvians would say shis oligarchs ir sanctionats, and that is 
incorrect because sanctioned, the verb already exists, but using the second meaning of to sanction, which in English is to authorize and approve. And therefore you cannot say sanctionat oligarchs, which would mean an approved oligarch. You have to say sanctiam faklaus oligarchs, an oligarch that has been placed under sanctions. So small mistake, but nevertheless important. Next, the expression of the year, or how we call it, sparnotai statiens, the expression with wings. Before I reveal it, let's talk about expressions with wings. Why do we call them that? Well, it is because an expression that is so great that it transcends its original context and becomes a point of reference for multiple people, be it inside a small group, like my high school, for example, where my teachers had Sparnote Teitsieni, or a whole society, like is the case with the Sparnote Teitsien of the year. So to understand the funny in the Spartanote of 2022, first have to talk about going broke, like financially. In Latvian we do have bankrotet, but we also have the word isputet. And so if you already know the word for dust, which is putekli, you will see that isputet and putekli have the common root put, which gives you a clue that isputet going broke is kind of linked to going out into dust. And you can also make someone go broke by adding the suffix inat, isputinat. Now, the expression of the year for 2022 in English goes something like this. In order for Russia to have a future, it needs to be rendered broke. In Latvian, like Krievijai būtu nākotne, to vajag is putinat, or rather is putinat, because this was a tweet and they wrote is putinat by capitalizing the p in the middle of the word, making this nice wordplay that works in Latvian. I'm a little bit surprised as to why this got chosen as the expression of the year, because unless I am missing something completely, this was kind of an obscure pick a tweet by Artur Hansons that I had not read before, but it is witty and a nice wordplay, so I'm okay with this being picked. However, in my opinion, a better pick would have been Aprobežoti by Nao Ruabežu, which is a play on the word Ruabeža, a border or a frontier. And when somebody is closed minded in Latvian or narrow minded, we say that he is inside borders, that borders have been placed around him or his mind. So he's up Ruabežuts, up the prefix that says around something. So Aprobežoti by Nao Ruabežu means therefore that closed mindedness is limitless, but of course it sounds much cooler in Latvian. And that would have been my pick for the year, and is very true. And finally, the clunkiest expression of the year award went to something said by our boxer, Mairis Briedis, who meant to say it's time to get up and raise our lowered heads, but he actually said, like spietelties un istaisnot savas saliektas galvas. Pretty funny because it creates a visual of somebody trying to iron out his badly bent and misshapen head. Not a huge mistake, but well, celt noliektas galvas to raise the lowered heads literally would have been more precise, and Latvian is a language that demands precision. Now, my favorite category each year is the new words of the year, the Jaunbar, the words that were created very recently that are just having a little bit of trouble adapting into Latvian society. One of these, Brievkrans, so this means a free-to-use water fountain in the city. Water free of charge, Brievkrans, made up out of two existing words, Brieves, free, and Kranz, a tap, but everybody knows, like from elementary school, that Kranz is colloquial way to say a boy's genitalia. Brief Kranz? How didn't they see it? 
And then, like every year, the IT sector always provides amazing new the new words that are just uh, so cringy. So this year, for the word error, they have proposed a new word, apparently, which is klupne, linked to the word paklupt, which means to stumble. I'm not sure if this is true, but this was written in the news. The reasoning is because the other word, kluda, which is how we say an error or a mistake, is too human. It implies a human mistake, while error is a purely technical one. Therefore, we needed something more technical, klupne, to be used together with the already existing klupe for glitch. Klupne and klupe. IT people, is this real? Are you really using these words? Please let me know, because every year I just can't believe it. But well, even new crazy words get assimilated over time and people get used to them. All words had to be invented at some point and that's why Latvian is also so great. We are never afraid to try to Latvianize absolutely everything. Uno, vis! Thank you for watching this irregular Latvian lesson. I hope that you found this video fun and educational. I also thought it was important to explain these words to you because I had already seen in some English written media mistranslations of what words and phrases were chosen. For example, in a website called Baltics.news, there's an article saying that the word of the year is occupier. You know now that Okupeklis is not exactly occupier, but rather a monument built during a time of occupation by the occupier regime and therefore reminds us of the occupation. Nuance, but still. However, when it comes to the expression of the year, like Krievijai būtu nākotni to vajadzētu izputināt, Baltics.news translated it as in order for Russia to have a future, it needs to be destroyed. Destroyed is not exactly what isputinat means. Quite a sensitive mistranslation, if you ask me. Interesting website, Baltics.news. Are they a Russian troll? If you would like to know the results of this survey for previous years, you can head over to the website of this initiative, which is here and also found in the description. And if you'd like to have more information about the Okupeklis, how it came into existence, the journey it had in Latvia and how it exited from existence, head over to Patreon for a longer story. Let me know if you liked this video, a little bit different than usual, and what was your favorite word slash phrase. And until next time, I will see you soon, maybe. Bye!